The theme for this year's Dutchess County Historical Society membership meeting is once in a century, and we don't think we're overstating its importance. We've been thrilled to hear words like revival, renaissance, and rebirth to describe recent activities of the Historical Society, and our programs have attracted a new level of financial support. But there are less visible but essential aspects to our operation that need attention. DCHS has around $80,000 of expenses each year, a number that's not changed much in many years. So each year we need to identify the corresponding amount of income. We benefit from New York State allowing us to use Clinton House for our offices and archives, although we have to bear all operating and internal maintenance costs, and we receive no ongoing taxpayer funding of any kind. In 2021, the DCHS board engaged the New York Council of Nonprofits to develop a strategic plan which revealed some fundamental issues. Anyone looking at DCHS's formal federal and state filings over the past decade will see that since our great centennial year in 2014, the Historical Society, like many other nonprofit organizations, has struggled to break even each year. In 2016 to 2020, there were losses that, upon examination, reveal a structural challenge of attracting investment in the most sacred but least visible activity, costs related to careful archival preservation. This was amplified by a shift to digital technology penetrating all aspects of the organization and a public increasingly pressed for time and money, topped off, of course, by the pandemic. 2021 was a turnaround year, and last year, in 2022, the board voted to allow a small investment loss, a strategic move that allowed a fundamental course correct, which brings us to the historic year of 2023. We're thrilled to announce the President's Centennial Challenge, which includes the largest single financial gift to DCHS ever, an anonymous gift of $100,000 that operates as a matching program with that $100,000 ready and waiting at the community foundations of the Hudson Valley, we're announcing today that we're seeking an additional $100,000 between this year and next, 2023 and 2024, so that for every dollar raised in that time frame, a dollar is matched. And in this way, we end up with a total of $200,000 that'll function as a major asset. This involves a minimum gift of $500 that's above and beyond any normal annual giving to DCHS. This will roughly double our endowment income. We benefit from a 20th century endowment gift from the Denise M. Lawler Fund. Lawler was involved with a historical society with her father in the 20th century. It's time this century to make an additional foundational effort. The income from this endowment will allow us to close the stubborn operating gap and ensure that our public programs and engagement, which are attracting record amounts of sponsorship and underwriting, can be complemented by our being certain that our most sacred trust, the hard to see but most essential work of collections preservation, is maintained. The endowment challenge is not the only positive financial news this year. Our experiment with an online auction in 2021 has now created our single biggest and most successful fundraising event. Also this year, DCHS benefited greatly from a $29,000 one-time grant from Dutchess County to purchase the latest in digital technologies for both internal and public access. Allow us to share two examples that show you the kind of less visible work that goes on in the conservation and preservation of tens of thousands of objects in collections. We carefully preserve and protect items that relate to our national history entrusted to us personally by the well-known and well-to-do, such as a June 1777 letter of Henry Livingston, saying the British in occupied New York City would never be crazy enough to come up to the river and burn Kingston. And we have the beam from the Livingston family home along the river that four months later received one of the many British cannonballs lobbed by the British when they did exactly that. Not that any more evidence is needed to show that Franklin Roosevelt practiced his beloved local history until the day he died. He reached out 
in 1936, with all that was going on in Europe with Hitler, to the British Admiralty to ask for and receive the October 1777 British ship logs of the famous river excursion so they could be published in the DCHS yearbook that year. A good lesson from FDR, there's nothing going on in the world that's so important that it should distract us from preserving our local history. But we're also responsible for the care of items that belong to the far less famous given by the far less notable, that also tell powerful stories. Arriving with a short note from someone who had just cleaned an apartment and came across this photo album from 1900 with poetry, confessed to nearly throwing it out. It turns out to be a very moving tribute from a young Nina McCullough Mattern to her grandmother, thanking the grandmother for inspiring her to advocate for issues for girls and women. Mattern was an advocate for women's suffrage, then the war effort, but died in the 1918 flu pandemic, nursing others to health, through this inspirational, intergenerational story, we learn the bittersweet life of anyone dedicated to social change, filled with advances and setbacks. It is from these carefully preserved historic objects that we are, and future generations will be, able to draw from and draw conclusions from, revealing a much greater value to these objects than any old scrap of paper, a chunk of wood, or fading photograph might reveal. We appreciate your taking a few minutes to understand the operations of our organization as we ask you to join others in a once-in-a-century contribution. Future generations deserve the same direct access to original source material, whether that material is a document, a block of wood, or something else. It's our responsibility to make sure there's no weak link in the long chain of historic preservation. Thank you.